Hi, I'm Steve Yunus. Welcome to the Speeding Bulletin, your Superman highlights video, bringing you up to speed on everything that took place during the week, April 26th to May 2nd, 2017. Our top news stories this week included... We've got our first look at Steppenwolf for the Justice League movie thanks to Lego. Andrew Kreisberg talks about the Season 2 finale of Supergirl. And Elliot S. Magan is reissuing his 1981 novel, Superman Miracle Monday. Let's check out these news stories and more in this week's Speeding Bulletin. <laughs> In movie news, the newest official Justice League movie poster is available to download for your computer, mobile device or to print out. Available in various sizes and resolutions, the Unite the League side-on image of The Flash, Wonder Woman, Batman, Cyborg and Aquaman can be downloaded from jointheleague.com. Funko has given us our first look at their Pop Funko Justice League movie figures, which are set to hit stores August 12th. Check them all out at jointheleague.com as well. Speaking of the Justice League movie merchandise, a collection of photos were posted online showing what the Lego tie-in toys will look like for the film, and they gave us a glimpse at what Steppenwolf will look like. Amongst the Lego sets are Nightcrawler Tunnel Attack, Flying Fox Batmobile Airlift Attack, and Battle of Atlantis. No release date for these Lego sets has been announced as yet. We'll keep you posted. In 2012, author and historian Rick Bowers published a book titled Superman vs. the Ku Klux Klan, which tells a group of intertwining stories that culminate in the historic 1947 collision of the Superman radio show and the KKK. That book is being adapted for the screen by Catherine Lindbergh to be produced by Lotus Entertainment and Paper Chase Films. Producer Mark Rosen said, We're excited to develop the thriller elements of the film in the vein of The Departed and Mississippi Burning. We'll keep you updated as information about this film comes to hand. Joe M Films has released the third and final part of their funny voiceover dubs for Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. What will Bruce Wayne do now that Superman threatens to take over the country? Will he come out of retirement and become Batman once again? Will Bruce and Alfred go out dining? And will Bruce and Diana's relationship last? Well, here I am. Bruce, please, what are you doing? do realize I'm Superman, so hand me over the crypto. Watch the full video at our website now. YouTube filmmaker Chief Brody Rules also put together a three minute trailer reimagining Batman v Superman as a buddy cop film. He has the power to wipe out the entire human race. Superman! I'm here to help. It has been decided that you will take on a new partner. Mr. Wayne. I was gonna cook. Surprise you. We fight. We betray one another. I mean, good guys are not. I don't know. Guess I'll just have to trust you. You will. Watch it in full at our website. In TV news, Superman homepage reviewer T.A. Ewart submitted his review of last week's Supergirl episode, which was titled Ace Reporter. In this episode, we saw Lena's ex-boyfriend Jack Sphere come to National City to unveil his big breakthrough in nanotechnology, which had the, tech the potential to eradicate all diseases. TA gave this episode a 3 out of 5, saying this was the first installment in some time where Supergirl actually faced an enemy, which was intriguing. The latest episode of Season 2 of Supergirl aired on Monday night. Titled Alex, this episode saw Alex kidnapped and the kidnapper threatened to kill her unless Supergirl released a notorious criminal from prison. Look for our review of this episode to be posted on our website in the next few days. The CW released a behind the scenes video of this episode, check it out. Supergirl's used to punching her way out of situations and Maggie as a police detective is used to talking down. Being more methodical. Uh, methodical about it. And so, you know, they both have different approaches to finding her and saving her. Every minute we wait matters. I want to get her as badly as you do, but we can't punch our way out of this. We gotta get it right. If the shoe were on the other foot, Alex would already be out the door. I'm not waiting. You're not the only one who cares about her. I'm going. The CW also released the official trailer and 12 images for the 20th episode of Season 2 of Supergirl. Here it is. You need this planet to worship you. It feels good to look down on them, doesn't it? Everything that happens from now on is your doing. Every city that burns. Every nation that falls. 
for every child of Earth that cries out, Why is this happening? The answer is Supergirl. Titled City of Lost Children, this episode is scheduled to air on Monday, May 8th. The CW also released the official description of the 21st episode of Season 2 of Supergirl, titled Resist. In this episode, Supergirl grapples with whether or not to obey the President's orders regarding Raya's latest actions. Meanwhile, Cat Grant returns to National City. This episode will air on Monday, May 15th. In a new interview with various media outlets, executive producer Andrew Kreisberg spoke about the upcoming episodes of Season 2 of Supergirl, including the season finale. As for how crucial Superman's return is, he said, he's incredibly crucial. For us, he's so comfortable in the role, but the show is called Supergirl, so our Superman is here in service of Supergirl. He's her family, he's her conscience, he's her mentor. As for the introduction of General Zod, he said, I don't really want to say too much about Zod. How and why it happens is a fun surprise. A number of character concept designs were released online by artist Alan Villanova, who revealed early concept drawings of Martian Manhunter, Livewire, Reactron, and Master Jailer. Superman homepage reviewer Thomas Dreyfus submitted his review of the latest Justice League action episode. Titled Luthor in Paradise, this episode saw Lex Luthor and Cersei invade Themyscira, home of the Amazons, to obtain a staff that leads to the Fallen Realm and an artifact of the Greek gods. Thomas gave this episode a 4 out of 5, saying, Overall, Luthor in Paradise feels balanced with its comedy, action beats, and strong characterization. In comic book news, the Superman Reborn story saw the Man of Steel emerge with a new reality, a reality emerging aspects of the new 52 Superman and the pre-Flashpoint Superman into one. Is this Superman a new version of a, or a blend of both? Dan Jurgen said, in a way, the answer would be all of the above. He said, I think of him as a new person. There are adventures in his past we haven't seen, yet we selected some of the best possible aspects of his past to include selecting from both the New 52 Superman and pre-Flashpoint Superman to make everything work, and yes, to make that work right, we discarded some elements as well. Viktor Bogdanovich, the artist who will move from his current role on New Superman to take on the art duties on Action Comics, has signed a new deal to create content solely for DC Comics and Vertigo. Victor said, Drawing the Man of Steel himself in action comics is another childhood dream come true. There are exciting things happening at DC right now and I'm delighted to be a part of it. Bogdanovich will make the transition to action comics starting in June. The creative team of DC Superhero Girls best-selling graphic novel series will participate in Free Comic Book Day on May 6, with two signings at Earth 2 Comics in Northridge and Sherman Oaks in California. Check out our website for full details on addresses and times. Comic books we reviewed this week included Action Comics 978, which was reviewed by Michael Bailey, who gave it a 5 out of 5, saying, The new history is in place, and for the most part, I love it. And James Lance reviewed Supergirl being Super number 3, saying, Mariko Tamaki has written a good story for Supergirl without making it seem too much like a copy of what's gone on before, and he, he gave this issue a 5 out of 5 as well. Superman comic books available this week from May 3rd include Injustice 2 Chapter 4 Digital Comic, DC Comics Bombshells number 26, Injustice 2 number 1 Print Edition, which is available in a variant cover, Justice League number 20, which is also available in a variant cover, Superman number 22, which is also available in a variant cover, Superwoman Volume 1 Who Killed Superwoman Rebirth Trade Paperback. A great metropolitan newspaper, you'll want to pick up your Daily Planet merchandise quick smart. Like this Daily Planet t-shirt available in various colours and sizes from $8. Or how about a Daily Planet coffee mug, yours for $13.99. These and other Daily Planet items are available from your one-stop Superman shop. The Superman Homepage online store at supermanhomepage.com slash shop. In other news, author Elliot S. Magan announced via his Twitter account that a reissued edition of his 1981 novel Superman Miracle Monday will be available in print, ebook, and audio versions from May 15th. Superman Miracle Monday, which was originally published to coincide with the release of Superman 2 in 1981, tells the story of Superman as he tries to stop an entity of pure evil from causing universal chaos. We'll let you know when and where you'll be able to purchase the reissued version of Superman Miracle Monday as soon as we know. 
NetherRealm Studios released a new video exploring the character of Darkseid for the upcoming Injustice 2 video game. A being of pure hate incarnate, the Lord of Apocalypse Darkseid demands a total subjugation of all existence. His merciless obsession has left a wake of suffering and obliteration as he seeks the anti-life equation. With his invincible body, limitless strength, an army of parademons, and the annihilating power of his Omega Beams make him not only a threat to this world, but to every world within reach. Injustice 2 will be available for PlayStation 4 and Xbox One on May 16th. Hallmark has unveiled the newest addition to their DC Comics Keepsakes Ornaments line, with the Superman, a symbol of hope musical ornament with light. Celebrate the season with a symbol of hope from Kal-El's home planet of Krypton, the iconic Superman shield. This striking Christmas ornament lights up and plays a clip of the stirring John Williams composition Superman theme. This Superman ornament will sell for $19.95 and will be available from July 15th. We'll let you know when you can pre-order it. The annual Superman celebration is taking place across June 8th to June 11th in Metropolis, Illinois, and the Superman homepage will once again be holding a meet and greet for members and fans to come together, win prizes, and answer fun trivia questions. The Superman homepage meet and greet is scheduled for Friday, June 9th at 10.30am inside Hardy's, located at 601 Ferry Street, not far from the Superman statue. There will be prizes to be won and giveaways for everyone who shows up, with lots of new and exciting games and interactive fun to be had. The Superman homepage Super Trivia Quiz has been updated for another month, and the three questions we're asking you this time around are, what is the name of Terry Hatcher's character in the Supergirl TV series? What is the name of the super horse seen in the Silver Age Superman and Supergirl comic books? And what is the name of Krypton's moon that was destroyed by the Kryptonian scientist Jack Sir in the Silver Age Superman comic books? If you think you can answer all three questions, come by the site now to submit your entry. You'll find the Super Trivia Quiz under the Favourites menu. Lastly, I published my review of the book Superman, The Persistence of an American Icon, which is an interesting read and well worth your time for any Superman fan interested in the character's past, his growth, his iconic status and his success over the years. You can purchase Superman The Persistence of an American Icon in hardcover, paperback and for the Kindle from the Superman homepage online store. That's all the news there was for the week April 26th to May 2nd. Scotty V is up next with his Great Scott segment, but please before you uh, go any further, like, subscribe and comment below and uh, share it with your friends as well. And if you want to support us and the videos and podcasts that we do, head to patreon.com slash superman homepage. Scotty's up next, as I said, but I'll be back after Scotty's segment with my Did You Know segment. Great Scott. Great Scott. Great Scott. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another fabulous episode of Great Scott. I'm Scotty V. Thanks for watching. So, about last week, the day of or the day after the last Speeding Bulletin came out, we had a little photo that surfaced online. I guess some people have said that the people who are sharing this around, who know that clearly the person who originally put it up realized after the fact that he shouldn't have done it, means that we're also culpable in the idea of making this photo go viral, making everybody see it, and we're part of the problem. Now, I'm sharing it when I do, because I'm trying to say I don't think this is something that a guy playing Superman should do in the suit. Now listen, it's not the end of the world, I'm not up in arms about it, I'm not calling for his firing. He's an actor, he's playing Superman, he did a fine job. I wasn't thrilled with the portrayal, but only because that type of writing, that style, is not necessarily my favorite. But I like seeing him. I'm looking forward to seeing him in the finale of Supergirl. Tyler Hecklin, of course, is who we're talking about. And a photo of him on set with the woman who plays Alex and the woman who plays Maggie, where they were both smiling and looking fairly appropriate for a photo like that. And he is like this but his middle appendage finger, middle appendage? His finger is up, which is a, a thing the kids are doing these days. Everybody's gotta be cool, you know, it's the in thing to do. You give the finger when you're taking a selfie. You know, when you're in your 20s like this guy, it's hard not to bow to peer pressure. It's hard not to be the Twitter, the slash Instagram generation where it's so cool and hip to 
throw your finger at the camera. Which is why it's not that big a deal. I mean, we all have done it, I'm sure, in different times. Especially joking around with your friends, you might do it. It's not necessarily extremely vulgar. It's not the most terrible thing you could do. It's not even the worst type of vulgarity. But it is on Superman-like. It is slightly disrespectful to the job that he's in, the costume that he's wearing, the character that he's playing, the children who might see him. And I've heard people say, well, if you don't want your kids to see that, then don't let them go on social media, which probably at a certain age, you shouldn't be on social media anyway. But this is a thing that obviously got out and is now being talked about and is something that a kid shouldn't have to see a guy in a Superman uniform doing. Now, there are people who wear Superman uniforms to Comic-Cons, out on Halloween, and I'm sure they do much worse things than throw the finger at the camera, but my reasoning here is that he's on the job, he's working, he's in a, a role that he should be respectful of, and he should feel appreciative of having that job. I'm sure he wasn't thinking. I'm sure he was just trying to be cool because that's what the kids do these days when they're in a photo, but it really lacked a bit of class. It's uh, inappropriate for a guy uh, in a Superman costume in an official capacity as Superman to do, that's all. Um, probably the most commented on post I've ever posted and, and, and for the most part, I think people thought I was being a little hard on him and I think a lot of that stems from the love that people have of him playing this character because they're, they've are they been so down by the movies and they love that there's a more positive, happy version. But it's not particularly positive to look grumpy and give the camera the finger, but it is something that people do in jest. So it could have very well been a jestful photo. My understanding was that David Harwood was the one who shared it, that's Martian Manhunter, and then pulled it down off of his Instagram. I was unable to find an actual connection. Uh, I can't even find a story or anything online. So it's clearly not even made news, which is good because less people will be affected by it. And since I shared it and other people shared it, maybe there is some truth in saying we're the ones who are making it something and it doesn't have to be anything. I would just say that it's not necessarily the best way to go about being at work and being respectful of the job you have and the writers and the creators and the people who put you where you're at. Even if you're messing around, we are in the social generation where everything gets put online. And he may not have thought it was going to be and maybe the person who took it and then posted it is to blame, certainly to some extent. But that person recognized that and took it down, wouldn't have been a problem if Tyler hadn't made the gesture in the first place. Stay away from things like that, I think, when you're in the uniform and in official capacity. Thanks everybody for watching, and remember, always keep your middle finger down. Did you know Wednesday, April 26 was Tom Welling's 40th birthday? As you know, Tom played Clark Kent for 10 seasons of the TV series Smallville, he was born in New York, New York in 1977. Happy birthday, Tom.